In today's video, I'm going to take a look at the new Synology Photos in DSM-7. So there's been a lot of buzz as of late on YouTube since the new release of DSM-7, whether or not Synology Photos can take the place of Google Photos, since now Google is charging for a service that was once free. Now, I'm not a Google Photos user, so it doesn't really affect me, but I am an iCloud user, and I do use iCloud Photos. I've been using it for years. And yes, I am aware of the risks that come with security and privacy when using a third-party cloud service. However, it never really concerned me, as I have nothing in my photo collection that is of concern. However, with the recent developments with Apple iCloud Photos and the new iOS 15 and the Mac OS Monterey, I just figured, you know what? I have a perfectly good DS216 Plus 2 running DSM-7 why not take advantage of Synology Photos and just get all of my photos out of the cloud and get them onto my local storage network? So that being said, I just wanted to take a look at this article with you real quick. I don't, real quick, I don't want to get into the debate over whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'll just put the link down in the video description for you guys to decide for yourself. However, I just want to say like what right here, right in this article here, right in this paragraph right here, it says, Neural Hash will land in iOS 15 and Mac OS Monterey, stated to be, re be released in the next month or two, and works by converting photos on a user's iPhone or Mac into a unique string of letters and numbers known as a hash. Anytime you modify any image slightly, it changes the hash and can prevent matching. Apple says Neural Hash tries to ensure that identical and visual similar images such as cropped images or edited images result in the same hash. Before an image is uploaded to iCloud Photos, those hashes are matched on the device against a database of known hashes of child abuse imagery provided by child protection organizations like the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and others. Neural Hash uses a cryptographic technique called private set instruction to detect a hash match without revealing what the image is or alerting the user. Now, like I said, I'll leave a link to this article down in the video description if you want to dig in deeper. And I don't, like I said, there's nothing in my collection that I'm worried about, and I'm all for protection of children. But I, again, I just thought, and I said, hmm, if they can do this, and I always knew what you're taking any risk, like, so what is your tolerance level, right, with using cloud services? I guess that's a question you have to ask yourself. For me at this point, I was like, there's really no reason to keep my photos out in the cloud when I have a Synology. So that being said, let's take a look at the interface of Synology Photos in DSM-7. So I'm signed into Synology Photos. Let's just take a quick tour of the interface. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see the Synology Photos and the logo. In the center of the top of the screen, you have three tabs, the Photos tab, the Albums tab, and the Sharing tab. And then on the right side of the screen, you have a couple of icons. This icon here allows you to upload photos to Synology Photos. This icon is to play a slideshow. This is to change to folder view, and we'll talk about that too shortly. And then this is to show the filters. And I think just in general, the filters are one of the most powerful features in Synology Photos, and I'll show you that soon as well. Now in the Photos tab, you have two spaces. We are currently in the personal space. And then you see the little drop down here. If you click on that, you also have something called a shared space where you can share photos with others. Now I don't have any photos in the shared space at the moment, but we're primarily going to be working in the personal space today for this video anyway. Adding photos to Synology Photos is really super simple. You could drag photos in. You can see it says drop files here. You can click on the plus sign and add photos this way. So let's do that. Let's add this photo right here. So you can see the task has been completed. And you can also upload photos from your mobile device using the backup feature built into the Synology Photos mobile app. Now, all that said, let's click on folder view, because I want to show you all of the pictures that you saw in my personal space were uploaded from my mobile phone. You can see here, if I expand, here are all of the folders of all of the photos 
that came from my phone. Now under the photo library, if we click here, you can see we uploaded the one photo just a few seconds ago. If I click on 2021 and expand that, it created the folder because it timestamped it. And there's the photo there. If you enjoy this type of content, please give it a thumbs up. It just gets the content out in front of more viewers. Now, back to the video. Let's go back to the timeline view. Scrolling through the timeline is pretty simple. You just come over to the right side of the page. The timeline appears and you can just click anywhere in the timeline. So for, if I wanted to go back to 2017, I can just click here and it brings me right back to the photos that were taken back in 2017. If we click on one of the photos, it brings it up in larger view and it gives us a couple of different options up here. We can share the photo out with others and there's the link. And then you have some privacy settings. So you have different options you can set here. You have an invitee list right here, and then you can set their privileges here as well. You can zoom in on the photo. Then here you can get information about the photo. You can see when it was taken, the type of photo, the megapixels, the resolution, the actual file size, the device it was taken on, the aperture, things like that. You can add tags to the photo. So if you want to group photos, you can call them up easily using tags and we'll show you that later. And if we click on more, it just gives us the aperture information, the camera that was taken, the exposure time, the focal length. So a lot of good information. You can delete the photo from here. And if we click on more here, we have the option to play the slideshow, download, add to an album, rotate, move to, or copy to. I do want to talk about creating albums next, but before we do that, I want to tag a couple of photos so that I can show you how to create albums, not only by selecting photos, but by also using conditions. So that said, let's pick this photo here. And remember I said underneath information, we can add tags. So let's add the tag, Alice, which is the name of the little white dog. Create tag Alice. The tag Alice has been added to this photo. Let's tag this photo here. We'll just do two and we'll call, we'll just add the tag Alice. Okay, so now we have two photos tagged with Alice. Let's click on the album section. And you can see Synology Photos does create a couple of albums automatically for people which it uses its face recognition places. It uses the metadata to try to group the photos based on where they were taken. Tags. And you can see the photos that we just used tagging Alice. Then it groups the videos and then recently added photos. So to add albums. Let's click on the plus sign. You have two options. You can create albums based on selecting photos, just like in any other photo program. You can select photos manually. You can hold down the shift key and select a group of photos and then just say, okay, to add them to an album. And you can also create albums using conditions. And I want to show you that now we'll create an album containing photos of Alice, the little white dog, just by using the tags that we added to those photos. So we'll call this Alice. We want the photos to be in our personal space, but you have the option of including them in your shared space if that's your wish. We'll want it to be photos only. And then we're just gonna search for the conditions and we'll type in the tag, Alice. And there's the tag. So we're gonna say, okay. And you see here now it created the conditional album with the two photos of Alice in them. So the nice thing about using conditional albums is any photo that you tag using the tags for the album will add those photos specifically to that album. So for example, if we want to take this photo now of Alice and we want to tag it, and we want to add the tag Alice to this photo, now this photo should appear in that conditional album, if I did it correctly. So let's take a look. And there you go. 
there's the third photo that we just added. So conditional albums are really cool and you have different conditions. That was just one example of how to create conditional albums using tags. You can create conditional albums using other things as well. So I've only been playing with Synology Photos now for about a week and I don't claim to know all of the features and all the little ins and outs. However, one of the features that I do really like from what I've learned so far is the ability to filter out photos based on all of the metadata. And this is where Synology Photos in my eyes really shines. So that said, let's take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're back in the Photos area under the Photos tab, still in my personal space. We're gonna come over to this icon right here where it says Show Filter. Now by default, you can filter by file type, which would be all the photos or all the videos. So for just a quick example, let's just filter by video. And you can see now it just brought up all of the videos that I have loaded up into Synology Photos. Let me clear that. I could look at the time taken photos. So if I look at all the photos taken in, let's say 2017, it quickly pulls up all the photos taken in 2017. But what I really like about it is being able to filter on things such as aperture, focal length. What camera did you use? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's click on the settings icon here and we can enable all of these other filter conditions. So you can see we can enable tags, we can enable camera, lens, focal length, exposure time, aperture, and ISO. And I could see where this would really come in handy for photographers. I'm an amateur photographer with a passion for real estate photography. And I know just if I wanna search any of my photos based on what aperture I use, I can easily do it using Synology Photos. So for example, now that I've enabled all of those, you can see all of those filter conditions appear here. I could filter by tag. So if I wanted to bring up all of the photos of Alice that we just created in that conditional album, I can just go like this. And boom, there are the three photos of Alice. If I wanted to look and see what photos I took with the Canon SL2, it brings them all up. And here's where it gets like really powerful. You can filter by which lens you used. And also like one of the things I like to know is what photos did I take using an F stop or an aperture of 1.8. So if I just click on that, I could filter all of my photos based on the aperture of F 1.8. So I think that's really super cool. If you enjoy this type of content, please give it a thumbs up. It just gets the content out in front of more viewers. Now, back to the video. So I hope you liked that little tour of Synology Photos. Like I said, I haven't been playing with it for a very long time, and I'm sure I'm gonna learn more things as I go. However, I do wanna say I do like the interface. It seems to be very streamlined and very easy. Now it doesn't have any of the fun editing tools like the iPhone photo app where you can crop and mark up and resize and adjust the brightness and exposure and all those things. However, remember it was designed kind of with photographers and professionals in mind and most professional photographers, even hobbyists are probably using Photoshop and Lightroom to edit their photos. So Synology Photos becomes more of a storage and management platform for the professional photographer or even the hobbyist, like I said. If you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links, the link right below me here. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. 
And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.